What do you love more, cinematography or the gear and tech that brings cinematography to life? Wow, it's such a great question. You know, um, I've gone back and forth with that several times through my life because I started off as a cameraman, as a camera assistant, camera operator, and eventually a DP. And I really thought for a long time that that was what I loved and that was what I was most interested in. But I also really loved the technology. And I gotta say that at some point, I think I discovered that the technology and what's involved in that is more perpetually interesting to me. Uh, look, there, I, I think that all cinematographers are either, well, in order to be a good cinematographer or the best cinematographer, you need to be part artist and part plumber. And if you're too much artist, then and you don't have the technical chops, then you're going to have problems. If you're too much plumber and you're just technical and you don't have artistic chops, there will be problems. So you really have to have a good blend of those two things. And I've met hundreds of DPs over the years and some of them are all artists and some of them are all plumbers, but definitely I feel like most people lean towards art. Uh, I have always been someone who's leaned more towards being a plumber, leaned more towards the technology. And you can do incredible stuff with the technology if you know how to optimize every bit of the gear you're working with. And in some ways it's kind of a cheat. You can hack great cinematography if you understand the, the technical side really, really well. Uh, but I'd say for me, it's, eh, it's probably leaning more towards tech. How do you know someone is a camera and lens nerd? Are there things that give it away? A little bit, and it's always surprising to me because I feel like there's some people out there who are sort of closet camera and lens nerds that um, don't necessarily advertise that. And once you, once you start to have a conversation with someone and they let little hints sort of slip, it's sort of like, you know, they, they might keep their, their technical status sort of in the closet. They don't really want to like come immediately forward. Um, when you start to engage with those DPs, when you start to engage with those people, you can really have a great geek out session. You can really get into the, you know, the nitty gritty. Uh, in, in my position over the years, uh, I've been privy to a lot of conversations and a lot of the, the sort of stuff that isn't out in the public when it comes to cameras and lenses and technology. And it's really wonderful to meet someone else who also shares an interest in all of that because we can sort of trade stories and I can give them some insights into technology that they didn't have before. When you deal with someone who's really only interested in arts and only interested in aesthetics, all of that stuff doesn't matter to them. They, they have people for that. There's a person whose job it is to make sure that the camera works right. I, I remember one uh, very big name ASC cinematographer said to me once, who was definitely all artist and very little plumber, he said, um, I just need to know how to drive the car. I don't need to know how the car works. And I thought to myself, I guess that's true. I guess if you have a driver's license, you can just drive a car and you can get from point A to point B. I feel like if you understand how a car works, if I, under, I feel like if you understand the technical aspects of what's going into it, you can get so much more joy out of that experience, especially if you understand horsepower and shifting and you know how a car actually gets around corners and what kind of tires are on the car. I feel like if you are in that mindset, if understanding the relationship between uh, the artist and their tool, the artist and their paintbrush, then it's an entirely different level than I'm only concerned about sort of the final result or I'm only concerned about one thing. Uh, I, I wish that people were would take more interest in the technical side sometimes. I feel like there's a lot of time that's being spent on YouTube with people talking about um, aesthetics without necessarily understanding uh, all the other side of that coin, all the other stuff that goes into it. Is there a stigma to being sort of a camera and lens aficionado? I mean, why would someone uh, not want to uh, reveal their uh, status? I think that the reason that people don't always come right out with that is because uh, you start to talk another language. And I know I have to be very conscious of this too, especially like um, it's not great at parties when you're with a couple of other you know, technical people and you start talking shop and you're talking to this because it, you immediately start to alienate other people from the conversation. And there, I'm not gonna say it's quite a club, but there is essentially an, a very free flowing association of people who are very technical, who work at the highest levels in the industry, and they all know each other, and we can bounce 
questions off each other because there aren't a lot of people who you can actually have those conversations with. There's only a few other people out there who really under, understand at the highest level and to all know each other and be able to have those conversations is really wonderful. Once you uh, have to tone the conversation to the, you know, a lay environment, it becomes a bit more simplistic and it becomes a bit more vague. And there's a lot of people on the YouTubes and whatnot out there who try to share information and try to say that they're technical or maybe they're just reading off specs from manufacturers, but that doesn't actually get into really what's happening because ultimately what we're talking about with cinematography is we're talking about photons. We're talking about light. We're talking about the artistic process of light that is being emitted, that's being bent by lenses, and that's being captured by image sensors, which is converting photons into electrons. And that, that means we're talking about you know, the quantum realm. It means we're talking about massless forms of energy that essentially is blasting, you know, Quite, the, the number one light source you see is 93 million miles away. This is really, you know, I think fascinating stuff and really geeky stuff that people can get into because, you know, actually those photons are bouncing off of bouncing off of materials all around us, all in this room. And depending on what the light source is and what it's reflecting off to off of, it's actually forcing electrons to move out of their orbit. And there's all kinds of just, you know. I think really interesting stuff about this when we start to talk about color. And I know I feel like I'm already going off the deep end here for your audience, but for the most part, um, there is something really beautiful in science. And what we're doing here in cinematography is trying to do something very aesthetic and something very beautiful scientifically. At least I, I, I think so. How did you discover what your strengths and weaknesses are within cinematography? Yeah, uh, it's interesting because um, I really wasn't sure what my strengths and weaknesses were in the early days. I went to film school and I think like a lot of other students there, I didn't know anything. I didn't realize what I didn't know. It wasn't until I started getting out into the real world and I started working, which I, I was fortunate enough to start getting some basic production assistant and camera assistant jobs while I was still in school. But it was amazing to learn a craft from people who were very experienced, who'd been around, doing it a lot longer than I have been. And to have them start imparting uh, the methodology into me of the craft. So uh, I learned right away that uh, I sometimes spoke way too much. I had opinions about things that when you're a craftsperson, you're not necessarily supposed to have opinions about. And uh, I also learned that I, I knew from a young age, I was very mechanically inclined. So I did gravitate towards technology. It's, it's a little bit like, um, Starting off as a production assistant, working on a set, it's a little bit like a living aptitude test. You get an understanding right away if you're um, introverted or extroverted and who your people are, who are you most like, who are, who's your tribe. There's various tribes that all kind of get along and work together. And if you've got a big personality, probably a good chance you might be like uh, in the AD department, an assistant director. If you are more technically minded, you might end up in camera or you might end up in one of the other crafts. And I sort of found my, found my people early on and discovered that this is what I'm into.